welcome to the video on arcs and chords. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the relationship between an arc and its chord, and describe the relationships between congruent arcs and congruent chords. There's a few different theorems that go along with this particular section. We're going to go through each of these theorems separately, and I'll explain what they mean as we go. Theorem 10-2. In a circle, or in congruent circles, Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. What that is saying is in this picture, I have a circle. That circle has two chords going through it, chord AB and chord CD, and they create two minor arcs, arc AB and arc CD. What this is saying is the only time that these two arcs, arc AB and arc CD are going to be congruent to each other is if the chords happen to be congruent to each other. So if chord AB and chord DC are congruent to each other. So if segment AB is congruent to segment DC, then the arcs AB and DC would have to be congruent to each other. This part in here that says if and only if is saying that it works both directions as well. So if arc AB and arc DC were congruent, we would know that chord AB and chord DC would also have to be congruent to each other. Theorem 10.3 says, in a circle, if a diameter or a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it's going to bisect that chord and its arc. So in this picture, if we have a diameter, in this case that's diameter BE, and it is perpendicular to chord AC, notice it makes a right angle here, if that's the case, this diameter here is going to do two different things. The first thing it's going to do is bisect the chord. So segment AD and segment DC are going to have to be congruent to each other. It also says it bisects its arc. So arc AB and arc BC would also have to be congruent to each other. Theorem 10.4 says that the perpendicular bisector of any chord of a circle is basically going to be, have to be part of the diameter or radius of that circle. So if I would create the perpendicular bisector of segment BC, that segment, if it's the perpendicular bisector, it would cut BC in half and make a right angle. If that's the case, it has to go right through the center of the circle, and that would make it a diameter or a radius. That will work on any chord if you Take the perpendicular bisector of any chord, it's going to have to be a diameter or a radius. Theorem 10.5, in a circle or in congruent cir circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center of the circle. What this means, remember if I have two chords that are congruent, their arcs will be as well. But what this is saying is the only time these chords are going to be congruent to each other is if they are the exact same distance from the center of the circle. So if my center of the circle here is point X, the only time that AB and DC are going to be congruent if the distance from X to DC, so that distance right there in blue, is congruent to the distance, is congruent to the distance from X to AB. So the distance I've just put in green. To make that easier to talk about here, let's throw some other points on there. We'll call this point up here point Y and this point down here, point Z. So the only time that chord AB and chord DC would be congruent is if the segment XY is congruent to segment XZ. All right, let's try a few examples here. Example number one, trapezoid ABCD is inscribed inside circle F. We know that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Well, we had a theorem earlier that said if two chords are congruent, then their arcs are as well. So I immediately know that these two arcs, AB and arc CD, would also have to be congruent. We're told that arc BC is 60 degrees. Well, this arc is 60 degrees. And arc CD is 40 degrees. Well, if this arc is 40 degrees, that means arc AB also needs to be 40 degrees. So I can figure out the remainder here, arc AED, by adding up the arcs I have and subtracting from 360 degrees. When I add up my 40 
60 and 40, I get 140 degrees. And when I subtract that from 360, I get 220 degrees. That means the measure of arc AED is 220 degrees. Example number two, in circle E, GI is 16. Well, before I go any farther here, if GI is 16, I have a radius here that is perpendicular to that. So I immediately know that that radius is cutting that in half. If this whole thing is 16, both of these pieces here have to be eight. I know that DE and EF are congruent. So if those two segments are congruent, we had another theorem that said if two chords were the same distance away from the center, then those chords have to be congruent. That tells me that this chord, AC, is also 16. And since it's perpendicular, these pieces here are also eight. And the measure of our GH is 50 degrees. Well, if GH is 50 degrees, since segment EH bisected the chord, it's also gonna bisect the arc, which tells us that all four of these small arcs here, AB, BC, HI, and GH are all 50 degrees. We wanna find the following measures. What's AD? Well, we figured that out here already, that's eight. What's FG? FG is also eight. What's the measure of arc IH? We just did that, and that's 50 degrees. And what's the measure of arc AC? Well, 250 degrees for those two minor arcs together would be 100. And number three, the radius of circle Z is 32. AC and FD are congruent to each other. And DF is 56. Well, again, we had that theorem that said if I have a radius or diameter which is perpendicular to a chord, it's going to bisect the chord in its arc. So if this whole segment DF was 56, I know that DE would have to be half of that, or 28. Since DE is 28, that's our answer to part A. How big is EF? Well, EF is the same size because ZE was perpendicular to DF. So it bisected it, it's also 28. What is ZE? Well, that's a little trickier. In order to do this, we're gonna have to draw the radius in. If I draw the radius of this circle in, for example, if I draw DZ in, we were told in this problem that that radius is 32 units long, or 32. If that's 32, I have now created a little right triangle here. In my right triangle, I know my hypotenuse is 32. I know that segment DE there was 28. So I can figure out what ZE is by using the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse was 32, so it's gonna be X squared plus 28 squared is equal to 32 squared. And then I'm gonna solve that out. I'm quickly gonna run out of space here, but X squared plus, well, 28 squared is 784 is equal to 32 squared. Well, that's 1,024. When I subtract the 784 from both sides, I'm gonna get 240. And then I'll have to square root that. I move my work up to the top up here. I have X squared is equal to 240. So when I square root, I get X is equal to, the square root of 240, I can reduce that. 240 splits up into 16 and 15, so the square root of 16 times the square root of 15 would be 4 square roots of 15. So that makes ZE 4 square roots of 15. And the last one, how long is AB? Well, AB would have to be the same length as DE and EF were, because AC and DF were congruent, and they're both getting bisected. That would also be 28.